Good morning, everyone. As we gather here at Daily Mass online, and welcome to everyone who's joining us online. So we begin <clears throat> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be read, made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> this is a reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they came to be. You know that they testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young man named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All people turned and asked him, What is this that you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination, without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel, the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these, these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they had separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, Have you grown evil with age? Now have your past sins come to term. Passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Oh, the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me, under what tree you saw them together? Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to, to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you. Lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree you surprised them together? Under an oak. He said, Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you also your head for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor, and they put them to death. Thus, innocent blood was spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in a dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, they give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. But early in the morning, he arrived in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a sin stone against her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her woman, where are they? No one has condemned you? She replied, no one, sir. Then Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go, from now on, do not sin anymore. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Connected Gospels. Um, so hold on for a little bit. I'm not quite sure how this is going to go with this homily because I have a couple ideas in my head that's been spinning around. You know, in our modern society, in our modern thought, where we focus in on the individual, we often think of sin as simply something between me and God. So it's the vertical dimension. And we often forget, <coughs> excuse me, the horizontal dimension, okay, how sin affects the community, how sin affects us. And one of the things that how sin affects the community is that sin, well, think of it this way. You know, think of, let's just think of the, the blatant one, the, the, the sex abuse crisis. How a very few persons, priests and bishops, have, because they made that horrendous sin, has affected all of us. They make us look bad. They make the church as a whole look all bad, not only as priests, but the church. And so that sin, that reconciliation, what reconciliation does is it not only reestablishes and affects, reaffects, or uh, rebuilds a vertical dimension, it's supposed to also affect the horizontal dimension, the, the relationship between people and the community. Now, and you notice in this, in this Jesus, um, what he does is he, he forgives this woman, reconciles her, and says, go and sin no more. Meaning that reconciliation is for her to go on living her life, but live it in a different direction. Don't follow the same path that you have been doing. And our reconciliation, too, is that when we are reconciled through the sacrament of reconciliation, it's that us to say, God forgives, but now go forward but on a different path, a path that brings healing, a path that we are intended to walk, a path of love. 
And that's ultimately what we're preparing to celebrate also at the Easter, at the Easter. Because what Easter celebrates is that, you know, humanity <coughs> did this horrible sin, killed the Son of God. But God forgave us. Easter Sunday is all about God's forgiveness. And God says, go forward in a new direction, but go forward. And so in our own lives, we have to be reconciled with God. We also have to reconcile with others. What that reconciliation means is that we don't hold people back, but we free them to walk on a different path as we are freed to walk on a new path, to be better, to do, to do who we are. So maybe the gospel challenge for us today is to, to, to embrace that reconciliation mode, to make sure that we are being freed to walk in a different direction new direction and to walk in that and to let other people walk in that new direction as well okay. so let us offer up our prayers for this world and we pray for our church uh, we pray for our mission to offer reconciliation and to reconcile this world so that we may all move forward we pray to the lord <coughs> lord hear our prayer uh, we pray for this world, and we pray for those areas where there is needed of so much reconciliation. We pray especially for uh, the Middle East. Uh, we pray for uh, the, the politics in this country and the divisions in this country for our own reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Uh, we pray for families and friends who are divided. For their reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in this time of coronavirus and a time of fear, we pray for hope, we pray for trust, and we especially pray for those who are caring for us, our healthcare workers, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the intention of our Mass today for the repose of Jerry Glenn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all prayers that we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. And Heavenly Father, we offer to you our prayers and our needs. We offer them up with love so that we may go forth to share that love with all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received this bread we offer you fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Street of light one, come share with me, in Christ who almost help us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my sins. Have mercy on me, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord, hear our God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received the heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. As with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving it thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving it thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant to be, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Randolph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of your kingdom at the coming of your Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away <coughs> the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body, may the body of Christ bring me, keep me safe for eternal life. And of course, keep me safe. So the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit, <coughs> permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly, constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward towards you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and please bow your heads to receive God's blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you the living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial through Christ our Lord. Amen. So go forth in the healing, in healing and reconciling love of our Lord Jesus Christ. So y'all have a good day. Um, again, we'll have daily mass tomorrow, 8 a.m., Wednesday, 8.30, Thursday, 8 a.m. And for those a little concerned, I keep on having a little tickle in the back of my throat. It's a hangover from whatever, so... I feel fine, just this tickle comes up. So y'all be good, enjoy the day, take care, bye-bye.